Although you may have already seen these images on your screen, to non American, these photos can be mistaken from a third world country or a banana republic. But how do we get headlines like these in the papers? Well, we need to rewind a little bit. <laughs> At 7.18 a.m. on the 6th of January 2020, the first clips began to roll in from the sheer volume of Trump supporters who were inside the nation's capital. But this began a chain of events that would eventually allow the beast of ignorance to roam the halls of Washington, D.C. But the most consequential words weren't even spoken yet. That wouldn't come until hours later. 11.57 a.m. Trump walks onto the stage in front of his adoring fans, the very people who travel all across the country just to prove their loyalty and support for a president in which they believe to be a stolen election. Here's what he had to say to them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. Although he may have not known it then, the words spoken will lead to a catastrophic cascade of events that will lead to an inevitable fate. Madam Speaker, the Vice President, and the United States Senate. 1 p.m. The Vice President, along with all the ballots casted by each state, enters the chamber. Everyone is still oblivious to the events that will transpire only 30 minutes later. 1.10 p.m. Opposition arises to the ballot cast by Arizona, while the crowd becomes more restless with police. Everything after this moment was a flurry. Multiple federal buildings around the Capitol were evacuated. Protesters, now turned to rioters, full with anger and misinformation of a stolen election, began to breach the fences. A 6 p.m. curfew was put into place by Mayor Bowser, but this is no matter to a crowd where, in their minds, they're protecting democracy itself. Representatives were beginning to be evacuated. A boil over point was inevitable. Something was bound to happen. It was only a matter of time. And then it happened. You're up. Well, it looks, it looks now like the... Riots breached through police lines in the west side of the Capitol. Shortly after, riots began climbing the walls to breach the building. Minutes later, riots began breaking Capitol windows. Five minutes later, 244, shots fired in the House chamber. 303, the first images of rioters on the Senate floor surface. At 334, Ashley Babbitt is shot. She wasn't reported dead until later. 405, remaining congressional leaders are beginning to be evacuated with gas masks over their heads. For the next few hours, the beast roamed through the halls of our capital. Each room and corridor the beast entered, it spread its virus into a place where we all hold dearly in our hearts in some way. The Senate chamber holds a, a really special place in my heart. When I was a high school junior, I had the opportunity to be a Senate page uh, where I spent my spring semester uh, working in the Senate. Uh, I delivered messages to those offices that the senators retreated to yesterday uh, in the basement of the Capitol building. I laid out bills and, and resolutions on those mahogany desks. Uh, I worked in the cloakroom adjacent to the chamber. Um, in fact, here's a picture of me. There I am, uh, Steve McMahon, a Senate page, 1985. For the hours, this beast roamed through the Citadel of Liberty, spreading its disease. We could only watch in disbelief. It, it was painful. Um, and the descriptive words that the news anchors were using uh, to describe what was happening uh, are words that I never imagined uh, I would hear on our news to describe American politics. Uh, words like insurrection, mob violence, sedition, uh, anarchy. Uh, now, as President Obama said last night in his statement about yesterday's events, uh, we should be shocked, uh, but not surprised. Uh, these forces have been undercurrents in our social fabric, whether we want to admit this or not, uh, and have long occupied uh, the dark corners and fringes of the internet. However, President Trump over the last four years have, has given these forces oxygen uh, and sunlight and fuel uh, and allowed them to grow and metastasize into uh, something ugly, which is what we saw yesterday. So we've come full circle, and here we are again with the very same headlines Mr. McManus just spoke about. Insurrection, mob, bombastically cover our newspapers, while a presidential response <laughs> encompasses calling rioters beautiful, special, and that he loves them. 
The implications will ring out for generations to come and our children may very well be reading about this inside of their Milan history textbooks. The day that the capital was taken over by Americans and the day that American blood was spilt on the capital of freedom. Politics will never be the same now that we know that extremist groups can quickly be turned into domestic terrorists. A democracy is an unfinished project uh, and I, I'm worried and fearful that your generation is being handed a political system that is that is close to ruin. But here on The Wrap, we look at different points of views. For example, Mitch McConnell and Mike Pence instead of needlessly arguing debunked myths in their speeches, they promise to look forward to the future and unity. Once the beast that spread its horrible infection over the capital was thwarted, but this carried on as normal four hours later. And although opposition to electoral votes did arise, they were easily squashed by an overwhelming majority. But Washington doesn't even dictate the strength of our own friend school community. Um, now, I always try to be hopeful. Uh, and I think part of my job as your principal is to inspire you uh, and our community to be hopeful and to be optimistic about the future and then organize and uh, the people and the work to bring that future into being. Uh, the pandemic has certainly put that optimism to the test. Uh, and yesterday's events have tested it further. Um, but my hope is bent, uh, not broken. Uh, I'm convinced that we have the capacity, will, and drive uh, to move us closer to that more hopeful future. Uh, we at Friends School, uh, I see the green shoots of that hope uh, springing up everywhere, everywhere I look. Uh, I see it uh, in our students uh, that planned an, uh, an event of um, political discourse and respectful dialogue in the high school in one room project this past fall. I see it and hear it in our seniors as they describe their experience with meeting for worship, a core practice, uh, and what it means to them and to our school. Uh, I see it in the weekly invitations from the William Penn Fellows uh, to join them at the Black Lives Matter vigils in front of Homewood Friends meeting. Uh, and I see it in the collaborative performances of the chamber choir, the orchestra, and the first ever radio drama uh, staged by our theater students. Uh, and I see it in all of you as you build community and forge friendships in, in this really difficult time of uh, isolation and, and crisis. So as we near the end of the semester, uh, I'm drawing courage and hope from seeing how each of you uh, are putting to use the knowledge, the skills, and the habits of mind that you're learning in your classes, uh, and how you are nourishing the Quaker spices and testimonies in your lives uh, to build a more just and more verdant and more sustainable world uh, for the rest of us. Um, Back to you, Carson. Thank you very much, Mr. McManus. Although we saw the evils of American nationalism on Wednesday, we saw the best of American exceptionalism and perseverance on the same night. The wheels of democracy are still turning. Our electors worked through the night until 3.45 a.m. to confirm President-elect Biden. After the events that happened, some senators even withdrew their objection to throwing out some ballots. But most of all, members of both chambers and both parties were almost completely able to put the American voter first. Although we have some work to do, America is strong and has wielded to stand for centuries to come. Remember that the Quaker Cold Weekly Wrap is your connection to the campus, country, and the rest of the world. Thank you for watching.